Howdy and welcome back to the Lake Life Family Channel y'all here at the treehouse. You're here for an exciting and busy day. Steph's gonna be here in just a minute. She's dropping off Emmy at uh, Mimi's house right now. So we can have all hands on deck here uh, fixing up the run. And we are today integrating our hens with our chicks or the really pullets now. So we are down to two hens as you all already know if you watch one of our latest videos we did have a bobcat come and take one of our chickens and i did not expect this to happen with the enclosure that we've built but uh, our comments have been turned back on you guys have given great suggestions and i'm going to do some add-on uh security features to our run that we have currently and yes the bobcat has been back multiple times and i have examined the run and there's areas that i think have been weakened something has been chewing on the outside clawing and i fixed the area that the bobcat originally got in so i put i put uh some galvanized one inch um 16 gauge staples in and those are very tough they're i mean you can't pull that out but some of you suggested actually putting a plank on the outside and we're going to go ahead and do that today I, i've also put some big rocks right here so you can't pull it out but we're going to pull all of these out we're going to put chicken wire here and then we're going to also have this fence and then we're going to put planks on top of that nail that in and then re-put our rocks uh which this is very very hard i mean you're gonna have to dig a really long tunnel hole something we would notice before uh, an animal would get in there um, and then put the moss rock back on top so i think with all of that we should be good but what i have learned about these predators around here is that they are persistent and they're always looking for a way to get in so i have also planted paw traps out here uh, these are number three traps if you look closely you can see right in there the bobcat has been up on here multiple times so there's one here there's one on the outside perimeter so there's one area that you can see the chicks pretty good and at night that that light really glows so there's a trap right there so if you're walking the perimeter of this wah bam you're getting it on the paw right there so the hens and the chicks have not slept together yet last night was the first night that i actually let them i barely slept last night by the way y'all <laughs> i slept with the pellet gun i i put a motion a motion sensor up right here so i could detect motion around the coop and uh, i've been just on guard because last night they were actually out i mean they stayed really close to the lamp it was in the 40s last night so they needed some heat but now it's the real test of them staying on the roofs together and i've heard if you put the pullets in the hens coop at night with them on the roost like while they're sleeping they'll wake up they'll see the new pullets and they'll accept them we're gonna find out if that's true or not but that's what we're gonna do. So last night they slept under the coop while the hens slept locked up inside of the, the coop. And we want everybody to be in there um, happy, except for the duck. So I'm thinking that the duck will be okay just sleeping under there and it's already getting used to that. So I think that'll be its home. It, it, they aren't good at like getting up onto a roost. They, they are ground nesters, if you will. So let's go on in here and just take a look at what we got here. So they've already started pecking at each other's food. And uh, the hens have not really been happy. They have they've definitely protested. And uh, this is old Henny Penny right here is what we're naming her. She is uh, she is very attached. So anytime anytime I'm messing with any of the chickens, she's very concerned. She has to be in the action, and sometimes she'll just she'll just fly right up on my shoulder if she thinks she's not getting enough attention. Won't you? Yes. But I think Henny Penny is going to be a great instructor for these other pullets. Uh, the rest of the flock to kind of get the routine uh, she's she's very good she lets me handle her she's really just a great chicken and i think she'll set a great example for the rest of the flock so during this integration period i've made sure that i'm throwing out a lot of treats a lot of food so everybody is everybody is getting something because if the hens are not full and happy they're definitely going to be uh, pecking at the other little chicks 
we're also a few days away from being able to eat our eggs again which is awesome because the grocery store has been out of eggs we haven't been able to get eggs we've been borrowing eggs uh, from my parents we haven't eaten them because they were on some antibiotics and you're not supposed to eat eggs out of chickens that have been taking antibiotics for two weeks after they're done with that cycle so good news is the hens are happy and healthy again they are still laying and we should have one egg in here right now but we normally get one or two eggs a day with the two hens so there's one egg right now we're probably gonna get another one i mean they've been laying eggs pretty much every day so if y'all can't tell why this quarantine situation has been happening i've been working on this run coop chicken life like every day trying to get it just a self-sustainable happy environment for them so that when i'm gone everything just functions beautifully henny be nice so that is what is going to be happening over i don't know how long this takes for them to really accept each other but i'm hoping that me sneaking them onto the roost at night is really going to help with that where they're more accepting It'd be a brutal process and that's why i've been out here just kind of monitoring everything because we literally still have a chick like one chick because my dad decided to play a trick and give us a like two day old baby chick now that little chick is all two weeks two and a half weeks old now and it's doing really well and it seems like it's a pretty tough chicken it's a it's a wayne dot i think i'm saying that right wayne dot or wayne dot um anyways if you guys know your chicken breeds you know they're tough they can stand on their own all right just got back from dropping emmy off over at mimi's house thank you mimi for always helping us out when we are trying to film especially dealing with these chickens justin has spent i want to say like the last week trying to make sure that these chickens survive the last i would say at least the 48 hours trying to catch this bobcat i mean i think he's gone into like obsession mode i feel like you've um you haven't slept the last two nights <laughs> like at all during the night he's had like this little doorbell that keeps ringing on and off he is determined to get this bobcat y'all i'm on a mission he is on a so, mission so step one we're gonna move these rocks away and then we're gonna take that's step one. Step two, take this. This is four foot. I got 50 feet of this. We should have just enough to go around. And then I'm gonna put a little bit shorter one right here, just so we can see a little bit better. Then we're gonna take some boards. I've got some leftover boards from where, where we were making the cedar plank walls. And I'm gonna cut those up and uh, basically put those in, which is what the lake lifer suggested to do which i think is a great idea it is really cool that we have our comments back on and thank you guys to everybody that has been commenting um a lot of you guys have been saying to sandwich the boards so put another yeah. board on there to kind of sandwich that wire which is what we're going to do what justin just said um and then a lot of you guys said to do um electrical fence which we thought about doing at the beginning but we have a little one running around and she's everywhere near this coop and it's just something that we don't want her to touch and fry her little fingers off. So we're gonna try to avoid that at all costs. Okay, we have one side semi done. I've got the light staples in there and a uh, little henny penny. She's been just staying by her side. She's like a pet. She is, she's the most like a pet. Um, our other one is a little bit more wild, but she'll stay right under your feet. She'll wait for you to like, especially if you're doing garden work. Like, <laughs> I mean, she well, yeah, she wants you. the worms. She wants the worms. So this is giving us, uh, or giving the chicks a chance to get familiar with the run and not being pestered. And um, the hens love it too, so. They are like the perfect outdoor work companions mm -hmm. because, you know, when you're like, oh gosh, oh, look at that spider or, oh, look at that worm or something. They just come over and grab it before you even have a, another chance to think about it. So anyways, uh, we have this one side completed with chicken wire. This is a lot easier to do for two people. Steph has been pulling in one direction. I've been pulling the other. And then uh, we're putting little, um, these little crown staples in. Uh, these are pretty small. I think they're only 9 16 inches long and they're not galvanized. They're basically like not meant for this, but this is kind of a placeholder. And then I'm going to put some galvanized one inches in and then that should make it a movable. 
And then we're gonna put the boards on top of this, like sandwich that. So I think with those elements, they should be okay. And then we'll put the rocks back in place, but you never know. You never know. I mean, these Do animals not can underestimate go the bobcat. I've learned that. That is absolutely <laughs> correct. <sighs> okay, we're putting in the last few staples. So this is the door that we have reinforced with chicken wire as well. The door, it only comes up to like right here. So head height, you can still look in. And then over here on this side, we've actually gone with a shorter chicken wire because we still want to be able to sit over there and watch. And you know, Emmy's pretty short right now. I mean, how old is she? One and a half? And that's normally where she stands and kind of looks. And you still want to be able to like, for her to put her hand in here and feed them and stuff because in here is really messy and she still eats dirt. She eats things off the ground. She'll eat the occasional chicken turd. I mean, no, <laughs> no, we haven't seen that yet, but um, we have to keep a close eye on those because of that. So we, uh, we usually sit outside here with her, but the only problem is there, since there's no panel board up on the top here, you can't really stretch the chicken wire. It's not a huge issue right now, but OS OSG, OSG is definitely going to come back and uh, make me do that next weekend. Stephanie is doing the most magnificent thing right now. She is making a new chocolate chip cookie recipe. It's family day, family night. So uh, walnut chocolate chip cookies. She's making those right now inside. We're going to show you all the finished product here in a second. I cannot wait to try. But to catch y'all up to speed on the build right now and any of you that are wanting to do one of these or want technical info, just let me share. I have gone around in key areas and uh, went ahead and just used a, a, a bigger, this is an 18 gauge crown staple right here. And it is nearly an inch long. I think it's three quarters of an inch. And I've just gone in and uh, because of the, the regular staples that I've used, they're not that sturdy and they've actually like started to work themselves out. They're not the, the best thing to use on the, the big uh, fencing. They're, they're fine on the chicken wire, like they'll go in, um, but they're not galvanized, they will eventually rust. And uh, with this right here, you just pop it in and it's, it's good to go. I gotta wait for the air compressor while I'm doing that. You guys gotta check these cookies out. We always do family Sunday dinners, and it's become kind of a tradition that Mimi always does the dinner, and then I always bring the dessert. So I decided to do a very simple chocolate chip cookie with walnuts tonight, just because we have so much going on, we're running around. So we just did a simple chocolate chip basic cookie. Oh, but you guys, they are so good. I added some walnuts. And I feel like the trick to a great chocolate chip cookie is you have to undercook them just a little bit. I add in a little extra vanilla that it actually calls for just so you can really taste the vanilla in those chocolate chip cookies. So that's one of the best things about Sundays around here is that we get a nice good meal over at Mimi's and then we always finish it off with a great dessert. So that's what we got going on in here. Thankfully those are done so I can go help Justin again. But something else did come in the mail while we were downstairs working on that chin coop. I ordered some planters to go in the backyard flower bed. So I have been working on this flower bed and honestly the entire backyard landscape since February-ish. And I feel like I've been in the mud for like the past two months working on that and like pulling up all the weeds and collecting all the rocks and moving away um, debris and everything. It has been a crazy journey in the backyard trying to get it fixed up because we started from scratch in the backyard. There was really nothing there except for just grass and mud and we wanted to fix it up for Emmy. So I know that you guys keep on hearing us talk about that for the last couple vlogs, but it's gonna be beautiful. Just wait a couple more vlogs and then you're gonna see it and you're gonna be like, wow, she has a vision. That is beautiful. Yes, so it's taken us so long to get our front yard landscape and our backyard landscape done. Okay, so my vision. I actually thought these were gonna be a little taller, but this is okay. So I'm gonna do three different plants here, and then I'm gonna do some azaleas on either side. They're like the really pretty flowery ones. And then over here, and then over there. Very handsy. <laughs> You're very jazz hands. Former dancer right here. 
<laughs> we're gonna do some like low laying ground cover that's like all it looks like baby's breath but it's um it like takes over the floor so it's gonna be really pretty because it's gonna go like low and then medium and then high and then medium and then low <laughs> okay i like the vision it's gonna be beautiful i like the vision hopefully those weren't expensive nah yeah. Yeah. I never really know. She doesn't really tell me. Things just show out. <laughs> I'm like, well, hope they were on sale. She is pretty frugal though. She usually gets things at deals. So I have borrowed a tool that is really saving me a lot of time. This is a, uh, a pneumatic nail gun. And I'm just going along the base here where we have uh, extended the chicken wire and I'm putting these boards in. I was going to cut these down, but I kind of like the way it looks, the way it comes up. A little bit higher it's just uh i don't know it's pretty clean and it's it's even more of a deterrent so it's basically just uh put it on there and that is nailed so i am going to slap these on here quick and that is going to be the last thing that we're going to do here today as far as the the run goes um, and that way there's no way for the cat to get its claws in there and actually start pulling out like the staples and everything are all hidden back there so you guys are gonna be safe I'll also end up doing that up here clean it up a little bit and I'll probably end up doing it up here but we're just trying to get the safe part down so we'll put these boards down we'll put the rocks back and we should be good to go for predators for now Gloves are off, and I am done. You know, we're, you know what I'm doing work when I got a pencil in my hat. <sighs> Back is hurting, ready for a cold adult beverage, and those chocolate chip cookies. I told okay. y'all it was gonna be worth it. OSG, give us a report on our work here. Show us what we got going on. Well, I mean, you can see the bottom, so. This bottom is not going to go anywhere. It's on t layered on top of two things of mesh wire. And then you've got solid rock. In some places it's stacked like three or four <laughs> times. Yeah, this is repurposed oh uh, stone. We have we have it sitting under our house. It's, it's kind of ugly. It's like stepping stones. We've never liked it. We've never liked it. So this is like the perfect opportunity. We're, we've picked up like another 20 of these and put them down and then we're putting some more natural stone on top of it just to make it look a little better uh and this kind of correlates with what stephanie's got going on with uh doing the mulch beds and then the rock and this will eventually be um uh pebbles what do you call that gravel gravel okay and then uh on the door we also did that with chicken wire i'm yet to frame that but uh it's pretty secure uh doubled up pretty solid we got stones right here so this prevents any any digging on it that, that's much more likely to be a fox than a bobcat but we're talking heavy stone multi-layer and it butts up right against that sandwich board so there's a two by four behind that and um it's sandwiched in there so there's no opportunities to get the paw in there and as you can see that ain't going anywhere so uh thank you guys for the suggestions on that and I think that's gonna work out pretty solid. So we're about to do our normal weekend family dinner with, uh, with everybody. So we're gonna head out, but this evening, we are going to put the chicks up with the chickens. But they have been fighting this afternoon periodically. We've been outside, so thankfully, thankfully we've been able to like referee what's going on, but they seem to be in kind of a, feisty this uh, a feisty uh, afternoon mood. I think maybe getting anticipation of roosting you know, these, these little chicks and a duck are sitting under the roost. So we're going to come in here tonight. I'm going to show you this now because it's going to be dark. And then we're going to come in here and I'm going to place them on the roosting bars. So try to sneak them in here. Supposedly that's supposed to work. We're going to find out though. Hopefully they don't come out. Sneak in a chicken while the chickens are sleeping. That's because a good question. I just feel like you can't really sneak up on a chicken. Can you? No, they just, they're just in, uh, you know, when they're in there, they're, I don't know, they're just kind of in like a dormant state. Like they're not going to get up and start fighting, I don't think. So I don't know. We'll find out. That's what, that's what we're going to show you guys. Hopefully it works and it's the magic trick, but we're going to find out soon because the sun's going down. Let's see. Okie dokie, everybody. It is time. So the hens are up here. 
They were just woken up. We actually have a coupe light installed. Stick them up here and see what happens. One. This is not going very well. This is not going very well. Okay, I can only get the barred rocks to stay on there. The rest of the chickens don't want to, they don't want to stay up there. This is a disaster. Is this going to be okay? The duck and little chick just hanging out together? I don't know, the duck is freaking out. The like, duck is freaking out. Where are my friends? Where are my friends? Oh my gosh, let us know in the comments. What are we doing wrong here? <laughs> <laughs> the chicks are freaking out inside. Yeah. I don't hear the hens freaking out. We may put them, I don't know, this might be a long night. Anyways y'all, thank you for staying tuned here. Uh, we're learning. Let us know in the comments what we should do in this situation. We have a tiny chick, we have a duck, and we just have a different age gap in the chickens. It makes it kind of difficult right now. So, <sighs> thanks for being here for the chaos. We love you. We'll see you right back here at the treehouse on the next one.